Greetings, Imperial citizens. Thank you for choosing to watch. I'm Anthony. In this communique, we're looking at the Vintage Collection's ATST and Chewbacca set released to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the greatest tragedy to befall the Empire. Return of the Jedi. <laughs> I regret nothing! I still can't believe we were beaten by a bunch of illiterate Teddy Ruxpins. As I was saying, while officially this all-terrain scout transport is the 10th version to be released, it's technically a repaint of the Kmart exclusive released in 2012. This time, it does not include the alternate chin-launching missiles gimmick. Ow. But it does include Chewy. The very first ATST was released in 1980. The toy was based on two quick shots from the Battle of Hoth sequence in The Empire Strikes Back. Called the Scout Walker on the packaging, Industrial Light and Magic nicknamed it the Chicken Walker. This is my original. It was the best, especially since I never had an ad at as a youngling. Its articulation was limited, but sufficient. Its head rotated, as well as its chin cannon, side guns, and Top Blaster, which was added for extra play value. The top of the head opened, as well as the hatch. The vehicle only seats one figure, but at the time, we didn't know any better not to complain. But the feature the Scout Walker was known for was his walking action. With the press of a button, you could stomp all over the adult. The ATST was re released for Return of the Jedi since ATSTs were heavily featured on Endor. The filming model was redesigned, but the toy remained the same. When the Star Wars line was relaunched in 1995, Kenner broke out the old mold and re released the Scout Walker with a new paint deco, this time appropriately calling it the Imperial ATST. The 2002 Power of the Jedi line brought the first scene specific repaint that we think was supposed to be Chewie's ride in a Toys R Us exclusive set. It also included Paplo stealing a speeder bike. In 2007, two more versions were released in Target exclusive Ultimate Battle Packs. A Hoth version in the Battle of Hoth set, and Chewie's hijacked version for sure in the Battle of Endor set. And then came 2009. The ATST was given a major upgrade. Released in the Legacy Collection, this top to bottom resculpt was stunning. It was movie accurate, you can now see the driver and a friend. I am your sister. It also included the aforementioned swappable missile chin guns and an ATST driver. However, it had, well, has one pretty significant flaw. It takes a Herculean effort to get it to stand. Sir, our ATSTs are dropping. Raise them. I can't. There's a few tutorials out there to help stabilize the legs, but I found that the easiest and the fastest is to take some wire or a fishing line and tying the second joint from the bottom. It's an eyesore, but it works. This version would be repainted another three times. A Hoth version released in 2010 in the Attack on Hoth Target exclusive set. The aforementioned Endor version in the 2012 Vintage Collection Kmart exclusive set. And then the 2019 Best Buy exclusive Mandalorian set, which included a few new decorations. Incidentally, the first painted version was released twice more in a 3 and 3 quarter inch Black Series series. The 2014 Battle of Endor multi-figure set, and in 2017 as a repackage of the 2010 version, this time with a new driver. Now the year is 2023. Let's take a closer look at the Vintage Collection's ATST and Chewbacca set. This set comes to us in the always awesome Vintage Collection packaging, with the Return of the Jedi 40th Anniversary logo. An assembly is required as it comes, well, disassembled. This time around, the ATST is given a printed paint application to represent the Walker, Chewbacca, and a pair of Ewoks commandeered during the Battle of Endor. 
The problem with printed paint applications is that if the printer isn't aligned perfectly, you can get bad layering, which gives what looks like a blurred image. As mentioned, this set comes with a repack of the 2015 3 and 3 quarter inch Black Series Chewbacca with Bowcaster. And the cockpit of course seats two. I, I mean, three. Yep, yep. If we include the opening hatches, this piece contains 22 points of articulation over 18 areas. As with the original 1980 version, the head rotates, as well as the chin cannon, and side windows. The top of the head and the access hatch are open. And newly added are the opening command viewport flaps. Gone is a walking feature and has been replaced with one of the more impressive feats of toy engineering, the highly articulated legs. The legs are connected to the drive section by peg and ring connectors on either side of the leg abductors and allows a full range of motion on each end. The remaining three joints are rotating hinge joints, elbow joint, ankle joint, and foot joint. This allows for a variety of standing poses. as well as rec poses. And this. But the big question is, have the legs been improved? Greatly. During the course of photography, the legs largely cooperated. The main issue still tends to be the uh, abductor joint, but with the improved sturdiness of the ankle joints, the functionality of the legs is significantly improved. However, I expect experiences will vary. And that's all for this communique. Before I sign off, I want to give a shout out to Leroy from Chicago. Leroy is a young fan and a fellow Stormtrooper enthusiast. And his mom reached out because he was eager to share his awesome Stormtrooper drawings. And here they are. Leroy also started his own toy review YouTube channel called The Bounty. Check it out. I honestly couldn't be more flattered and humbled. And this is a reminder to all of us that Star Wars is and always will be ageless. And now it's time for you to do your part for the Empire. Like, subscribe, share, leave a comment below, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, and await the next transmission. I can't. I can't. I can't. No. Uh, are you rolling? Yes. Okay, you, you said guys say rolling. rolling. Well, you said rolling. Okay. I can't.